Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the Barkhausen effect. You can actually hear magnetic domain shifting. And I'd like to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. I have here some neodymium magnets. I've labeled one end red and the other end blue. So the north and south end, you can see the difference here. You can see that if I grab another magnet like this one here, I can label the north end and the south pole as well. So that when I bring the magnet near, the opposite ends are always attracted to each other. But you can see that when I flip the magnet, the other one has to flip as well. But that's not what happens when I bring a piece of iron near the magnet. When I bring a piece of iron to the magnet, I can attract either end of the magnet to it. So there's no real north end or south end of the iron here. But what if that's not actually the case with iron? What if iron is actually a bunch of magnets in here? For example, I made something that acts very similar to the iron. So you can see that this thing is attracted to both the blue end and the red end. So this thing is acting very similar to the iron. No matter which way I turn the magnet, it's attracted to it. So then what is this? This is actually just a container with that same magnet inside of it. When I bring the red end towards it, it can be attracted to the blue side of the other magnet. And when I bring the blue side towards it, it's attracted to the red end. So if the magnets inside of it are allowed to turn freely, then it acts like this iron bar here. And that's actually what's happening inside of iron and other ferromagnetic materials. It's actually made up of small little magnets or magnetic domains. But they're not this big at all. They're extremely small. The magnetic domains in iron are around 10 to the negative 4 to 10 to the negative 6 meters. So they're microscopic. So if this is actually made up of a bunch of small magnets, why don't two pieces of iron stick together then? Well, that's because the magnetic field in this iron bar is actually canceled out by all of the domains that are randomly distributed pointing different directions. A typical piece of iron looks like this. There's magnetic domains and these arrows are showing which way the magnetic field is pointing. And you can see that they're just randomly distributed about the metal. The lowest energy state of a bunch of magnets when they get together is just to be randomly distributed, not actually all pointing the same way. If you've ever had a bunch of ball magnets, it takes a lot of energy input in order to align them all the same way. But if you just throw them all in a bag together and let them all randomly distribute, you'll find that that magnetic ball doesn't have much of a magnetic field around it. It can't really even stick to anything. And that's the same thing that's happening in the iron here. The iron is just a bunch of tiny little magnets all stuck together pointing different direction. So there's no overall magnetic field. So they don't stick to each other. But if you bring a magnet near them, then you can artificially change the direction of those magnetic domains so that they all start to align. So that the iron itself becomes a magnet. Here's where it gets really interesting. Magnetic domains were theorized to exist for a long time but nobody was able to actually prove that they exist. So if a piece of iron is actually made up of a bunch of tiny little magnets, when you bring an external magnet near the iron, you shouldn't ju just get a continuous change of magnetic field inside the iron. But what you should get is a bunch of tiny little discrete changes when each of those domains flip direction. But in 1919, a physicist named Heinrich Barkhausen discovered that there was actually a way to prove the discreteness of the change of the magnetic field when you bring a magnet near it. What he said is that in the crystal lattice of these ferromagnetic materials, there should always be some defect. And if you were to change the direction of the domain, the domain should get caught on those defects and then suddenly snap back into place. And that sudden snap of the magnetic domain should get a, give off a little bit of an electromagnetic change. And if you set it up just right, you should be able to detect those tiny little pulses of change of the electromagnetic field. So I'll show you the way in which he was able to detect these small domains all shifting direction and giving off an electromagnetic pulse. What you need to do to pick up an electromagnetic pulse is put a coil of wire all around the iron. So this is a piece of wire coated with enamel so that it doesn't short circuit when we wind it around. So you can just start winding it around the magnet like this. And you need a lot of turns for this. While we're waiting for me to wind this, let me tell you about our sponsor for today, NordVPN. A VPN is a virtual private network, and it's what keeps you safe on the internet. 
NordVPN uses military-grade encryption to encrypt all of the data that goes to and from the computer at your house. But even with this military-grade encryption, it doesn't mean that it's hard to use. It comes with a really lightweight Chrome extension that you can just use in your regular browser. NordVPN uses thousands of servers in over 61 countries, and so it can bypass internet firewalls. When you connect to these different servers around the world, it acts as though your computer is actually in that different location wherever you choose the server. Because these servers allow you access from everywhere, that means you'll never miss your favorite show when you're traveling abroad. So if you're tired of not having secure internet access, or even tired of your internet service provider throttling your speed, check out nordvpn.com slash the action lab to get a two year plan plus a bonus gift and a huge discount. Now let's get back to our experiment. When you're finally done, it should look like this. So when the magnetic domains flip inside of there, we should be able to pick up a little blip of current in here because the electromagnetic field will change suddenly and that will induce a current in this coil here. But the change in current is going to be really small. So we need an amplifier. So I just grab an electric guitar amplifier. Then I'm gonna take the other end of the cord here that would normally plug into the electric guitar. And I'm just gonna hook it on the negative and positive end here. Then I just take these and plug them on either end of the cord here. So now these are connected to both ends of the coil. Turn on my amplifier. I'm gonna put my mic really close to the amplifier so you can hear it. Okay, I just have a clamp holding my iron bar down so that it doesn't fly up to my magnet. Now because there's billions and billions of these magnetic domains in here, we won't hear tiny little snaps, but what we will hear is kind of like a white noise. Okay, so listen when I bring it closer. Look how loud it is with this one. To show you that this isn't just white noise bringing it close to the speaker, once I disconnect this, you can see you don't hear anything. You can hear them continually changing direction. This static noise that you're hearing is called Barkhausen noise. And it's a way that was first proven experimentally to show that there's actually magnetic domains in ferromagnetic material. One way to show that this white noise that you're hearing is coming from the magnetic domains is notice what happens if I don't switch the direction of the magnet. Let's bring the red end close to here. Now if I pull it off and bring the red end again, you don't hear it but flip it around and have it be the blue end so that the magnetic domains have to switch, then you hear it. So in order to keep hearing the sound, you have to switch. If you don't switch, then it doesn't do it. What's amazing about this Barkhausen noise is that it's actually so precise, you can even use it to measure the amount of defects in your metals. So if you get your setup really precise and you can quantitatively measure that white noise sound, you can actually tell how many defects are in your crystal lattice. And that's really nice in the field because it's a non-destructive method to tell if there's defects in your metal. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And check out my Action Lab Shorts channel, which is a separate channel where I do shorter videos similar to what I do on this channel, but they're less than a minute long. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.